This topic is about profound anesthesia during endodontic therapy. Okay. You know, it turns out that nobody's uh, half as scared about having root canal treatment as they are afraid about getting anesthesia and the anesthesia not being adequate. Uh, having a root canal without anesthesia was, could be one of the worst experiences a human could have uh, as uh, seen in the Marathon Man, okay? Um, fortunately, we don't use Black & Decker um, to get in there. Um, but uh, if you can get your patient profoundly numb, if you can even give the anesthesia without hurting them, they're going to love you, okay? And if you, you can perform a procedure that is... Uh, used by talk show hosts and comedians to, uh, to uh, inspire fear in, in their uh, listening public. Uh, you can get people numb during root canal therapy. That's something they actually brag about uh, at the next cocktail party because they say, what's going on? I had a root canal. Ooh, they get the, the sympathy thing and they go, no, actually it was awesome. It was just as easy as having a filling or a crown done. So, uh, so how do we accomplish that? Well, it used to be a lot harder. Okay, when I got out of school in 1980, it was tough to get really hot teeth numb. That was before we had uh, uh, periodontal ligament injections, before we had inner osseous, before we had uh, more effective uh, solutions like articaine that infiltrates so effectively. But let's get, let's start with the solutions. Okay, lidocaine, still. Still the best. This lasts longer than Articane, uh, especially if you're using f 1 to 50,000. And um, it's inexpensive, uh, no allergenic responses reported. This is good, but if we're in lower molar areas, it's not going to be enough. Uh, we're going to use Articane. In the United States, it's uh, the only one uh, company that sells this is Septodont, so it's called Septicane. Been in Europe, Canada, the rest of the world for many years before it came to the United States. This is known for infiltration capabilities. And it's a 4% solution. These are, this is 2%. So you need to use half as much. And in fact, if you use this for a block and you use our typical American lidocaine block, two carpules by the mandibular nerve, you could cause some damage to it, okay? Um, furthermore, I'm gonna tell you how to give a mandibular block that you will not miss, regardless of the solution that you use. So you don't need to use articaine for that. Articaine we're gonna use for buccal infiltrations, uh, mostly in lower posterior teeth. Okay, so let's talk about technique. We have infiltration. And we have block. Uh, infiltration. This is big. For upper molars, you need to give a pavel infiltration. Okay, this can be really painful if you don't do it right because the palatal tissue is so tough. If you plant a normal syringe needle in there and you push even slightly on it, it's going to hurt a lot. Um, it has to be given slowly. We need to have some type of topical for this, and that could be uh, pressure. Probably one of the best is ice, cold. If we put it I stick the same I stick we made out of an empty anesthetic carpule, pull it out, wrap it in the gauze, and just park it in the, the infiltration site on the pa patient's palatal tissue, hold it there for 20 seconds, put the needle in next to it, they won't feel it at all if you give a slow injection. Um, they have some uh, uh, topical patches you can place on there, but the typical topical on a Q-tip, this gel, is not going to work for this. Um, so ice pressure, um, or um, if you use the Compudent or the wand, or uh, it's called STA, it's the computerized injection. 
These give extremely slow infiltrations, drop by drop by drop, and once you get it going, you just get your hand rest, uh, finger rest, and just you know, talk to the patient, talk to your assistant, whatever. You don't have to pay attention, and it's going to take about a minute to get that uh, area infiltrated. About a half carpule, okay? This is going to be a half carpule of 1 to 50,000. This is Lido, 1 to 50 epi. Half carpule right there. I'm going to give the other half carpule on the buckle side of the same tooth. I'll add one more carpule of lidocaine. Uh, on the buccal infiltration side, and uh, that's going to do it for upper molars. Okay, for, that's how we do upper molars in a two, two and a half hour single visit appointment and not have our patient uh, losing anesthesia early on. You may have to, if you're getting into the two and a half hour range, to reapply some anesthesia, a, a third of a carpule, a quarter of a carpule of palatal infiltration, another half carpule of the rest of that carpule on the buccal right before you obturate is not a bad idea. Infiltration with septicaine is extremely effective. So, where are the areas that I'm going to use that? There are some upper molars that it's not easy to infiltrate. Patients that have a large malar eminence may cover with thick cortical bone one or two of the buccal roots. Okay, so in that case you may need to use it for buccal infiltration Occasionally on uppers, but a lot on lowers, molars especially. Okay. Um, another nice thing about doing buccal infiltration with septicaine is if you're doing uh, lower anteriors, premolars, instead of giving a block and have the patient's whole lip numb, uh, simply infiltrating over the root apex of that tooth will usually give you at least an hour, maybe an hour and a half of anesthesia. Um, I use this on all my lower molars. So my lower molars, I'm going to give a mandibular block. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And I'm going to give a half or full carpule of articaine in the buckle. Since I've been using articaine as a buckle infiltration in addition to the mandibular block, I have had very few cases that need interosseous anesthesia. Those would be the hottest molars. Um, Sometimes the half carpule on the buckle will not get the accessory innervation in a lower molar numb. I will go ahead and put the second half carpule in the lingual attached gingiva. And because the cortical plate is thinner on the lingual side of these lower posterior teeth, then um, I'm going to get a better infiltration. Usually that will take care of it. Uh, maybe one out of 300 uh, emergency cases, I'm going to need to use an interosseous. Um, interosseous anesthesia. Interosseous anesthesia is the silver bullet of endodontic anesthesia. Uh, we have all of our techniques, but all techniques fail uh, when conditions uh, become difficult enough. And if you have an uh, interosseous anesthesia kit, then you can get any tooth profoundly numb before you do a root canal. So in this day and age, if you do a root canal and your patient has any kind of discomfort during it, you're not operating at standard of care. It's not appropriate. Okay, so um, there are set. A couple of these, there is uh, Stabident, which was the first one, and there's X-Tip. This is the one that I use. Since this came out, I don't think anybody uses that. Uh, this was difficult to get the needle in the perforation through the cortical plate. X-Tip has a latch grip penetration device here. It's a little tube that's cut at an angle at the end. Okay, and this is put in your slow speed hand piece. Give a drop or two of anesthesia in the uh, tissue adjacent to where you want to perforate. Spin this up to about 5,000 RPM, and when it drops through the cortical plate, you're going to pull the hand piece back, and this part comes out, and you're left with this hub and the little tube that goes through the tissue. So here's the soft tissue. Here's the bony tissues, cortical bone, and then here's the medullary bone, and that's where we want our solutions to go. So because we have this little hub, we can put it in the mucosa, we can put it in the attached gingiva. I usually will put it right near the apex of a root if, if it's a really tight, uh, really hot case, but we have this 
little hub here and a place for the needle to go through. One comment I'll make is the needle is metal, the, the tube is metal. You will get a little bit of leakage here unless you put a, uh, a rubber stop. Just put an endodontic rubber stop on the needle and uh, that'll act like a gasket. Be certain uh, that you take this out at the end of the procedure. I mentioned that because I like to leave them in. In case I, my patient loses anesthesia, I just lift the rubber dam, drop a needle in there, another half carpool with inner osseous anesthesia, they are numb immediately. At the moment, you inject, you can put ice on it and, and feel that, see that tooth becoming less and less sensitive as a second or two goes by. And there is a new entrant in this area of uh, instrumentation, and it's called Anesto. Uh, it is an attachment that goes on your uh, on your electric handpiece motor, and it actually spins the carpule and the needle. The needle that they have with it is the penetration device, so you don't penetrate and then put the need another needle in with a, a regular syringe. This is the penetrant. By spinning the needle in the carpule, it drops through the cortical plate, and then there's a little lever that you just crank however much anesthesia you want in the medullary space. Very fast. This one, instead of coming in at right angles to the root structure, let's say there's a mesial root of a lower molar, here's the buccal cortex. We want to do a stabidant somewhere, you know, not to hit the root, but we want to be about at right angles. For the anesto, um, we want to we want to enter pretty much right where the papilla is, and it's going to be in an angle more like this. We're going to drop down into the cortical plate. Um, and it, it's, it's more cortical plate, but this is such a fast method of entry that it's, uh, you can have interosseous anesthesia completed in less than a minute. So this is, this, is the, this is the killer technique. Let's talk about blocks, mandibular block. Okay, I have a rich fantasy life, so when I found out that I could use Articane very effectively to knock out the accessory innervation, the first thing I want to try is, can I eliminate the block? Uh, turns out not so good. You need the block and the infiltration for these teeth. Lower molars all have accessory innervation, all of them, okay? So not some of them. So the mandibular block knocks out 80% in the, the uh, infiltration, the rest. Our classic traditional block is uh, one of, here's the mandible, not a great picture, okay, um, here's the entry, here's the mandibular nerve, okay, and here's the upper jaw, and uh, most of us were taught in dental school, you're going to head at parallel to the occlusal plane here of the mandibular plane, and you're going to put your solution right there. Now, the problem is if this little foramen the, the, knee, the, the nerve comes into is a little higher, then you have missed it because there's a ligament that comes down through here and, and blocks it from getting into the nerve. Um, I'm gonna recommend that you do the Gal Gates block. I think it's named after two gentlemen who uh, designed it. Um, basically, we have the cranium here, and the nerve comes, trigeminal nerve comes out and enters the foramen. Uh, the problem is this ligament blocking our solution, so their recommendation is, let's not head in parallel to the mandibular plane, let's head in parallel to the maxillary plane, so we're right behind the sec upper second molar, we're gonna enter in between the rafe, medium rafe, and we're gonna try and touch the middle of the ramus, okay? How do we do that? The first what time you're going to go relatively straight back and deposit solution as you go. You're basically anesthetizing the track that you're gonna inject the second carpule in. Then load your second carp, go ahead, aspirate, be certain you aspirate. Um, if there's no blood, go ahead and deposit the solution slowly. If there's blood, pull back, move a little bit to the side, re-inject, check, and you should be okay um, uh, away from the, the blood vessel you were in before. So uh, the second uh, uh, injection is one that would be more uncomfortable if they, we haven't anesthetized the path 
to start with. So I'm going to put a, about a 5, 10 degree bend on my needle and I'm coming in. Actually, I'm going to go a little bit cross arch and drop down because I want to hit the middle of the, the ascending portion of the ramus right here. If I put my thumb or finger, index finger on one, both sides, I know that's how wide my, uh, my uh, ramus is. And as I have my thumb on one side and my index finger in the back, in, on the right side would be the opposite over here, it would be the, my other hand, um, then I'm going to basically just inject, imagine my mind, where my fingers are, where the center of that is, and touch bone. Okay. All right, so the second injection, I do not inject until I feel it touch bone. I'm going to use a 27 gauge long needle. And uh, if I drop the solution and touch bone right here, I will have a block occur 98% of the time. Uh, I, it's rare, rare to, mi to miss the block. With the traditional block, I was having about a 70% hit rate. 